These are the components of a Thunderstruck Motors Sevcon electric sailboat kit. I'm going to show you just how easy it is to wire it. I'm going to start by removing all of the bolts on the controller except for the one marked with just the plus. And then I'm going to hook up the three large motor cables. The motor cables are included in this kit as well as the insulating boots that cover the lugs on the motor and the controller. On the motor casing, you'll see stamped next to the phase leads, U, V, W. Those will get hooked up to the controller, U to M1, V to M2, and W to M3. When attaching the motor cables, you want to first install the cable, and then on top of that goes the washer, and then the lock washer, and last is the nut. The red cable that comes with the kit goes to the terminal marked B plus on the controller and also to either of the large terminals on the contactor. So taking a quick look at the wiring harness here, the largest connector is a 35 pin amp seal that goes to the Gen 4. There's a small 3 amp fuse red wire that'll go to the contactor, a single black wire that goes to B- on the controller. A 6 pin connector is used for the optional clear view display and for programming. There's a 5 pin that goes to the encoder on the motor, and a 2 pin that goes to the thermistor that's in the motor. There's a 2 wire that goes to the key switch, and a 2 wire ring terminal uh, style that goes to the contactor and a 9-pin connector that will be for the throttle. So with the wiring harness, it's probably best to start with the large multi-pin connector. Then you can unravel what you need from there. It will only go on one way with the clip facing the outside of the controller. I'm going to connect the two wires for the motor, the thermistor and the encoder. The black connector can be a little bit snug, so make sure you squeeze it on until you hear it click. The two small ring terminals, we'll put those on the contactor. They are not polarity sensitive, so it doesn't matter which one gets black, which one gets red. But you do want to make sure you put the wire on first, and then the washer, lock washer, and nut in that order. We'll get to the other side of the contactor in a moment, but first is the key switch with the two spade terminals. These are also not polarity sensitive, so either orientation on there is fine, just make sure they're nice and snug. And also while you're at it, check to make sure the key switch is off, which is counterclockwise. Connecting the throttle is also pretty straightforward. The 9-pin connector can only go in there one way, just make sure it clicks. Now that the key switch is connected and turned off, I'm going to finish the power wiring. You'll have to run a cable from the most positive side of your battery pack to the contactor. And on top of this, you'll install the single red wire with the 3 amp fuse that goes to the controller. The cables that connect directly to your battery pack are not provided with this kit because of the variation in length of the cables and also the lug type on your batteries. So make sure that the high current larger cable goes onto the contactor first, and on top of that then is the smaller 3 amp fused wire. <music> Lastly, I'll connect another cable from the most negative side of my battery pack to the controller, and on top of that is the single black wire from the multi-pin connector. If you happen to see any sparks here, it's most likely just because your key switch is on, but you would want to also make sure you haven't made any other mistakes with the wiring. And lastly, I'm going to connect the most positive terminal of my 48 volt battery pack to the open contactor wire.
So before I fire it up, I'm going to do a quick once over, making sure that all of my connections are tight, making sure that the most negative side of my battery pack is going to the B- minus on the controller, and that the most positive is going to the contactor, the side of the contactor with the 3 amp fuse wire on it, and making sure everything looks good. Once you turn on the key switch, you'll hear the contactor close and you'll see a green light on the controller. If the green light on the controller is ever flashing, that means that there's a fault somewhere in the system. And you can count the number of flashes and look up the fault code in the manual which is available on our website. As you give it throttle, if your motor isn't bolted to anything, you do want to support it because it will want to shake a little bit and you don't want to put any strain on those motor cables. On the smaller Gen 4 controllers, there's a 6-pin connector actually built into the controller. On the larger controllers, if you get a sailboat kit from Thunderstruck, we include a connector into the wiring harness. So you have a place to program the controller if need be, and to plug in your Clearview display. Once you boot up the controller, you'll see some really good information on your system, including your battery voltage, uh, the RPM of the motor, direction, even motor temperature. We hope you have fun with the sailboat kit. Feel free to send us pictures of your installation and your boat. Like us on Facebook, and also check out the other videos we've posted on our YouTube page. Sitting on a monster stump, among other bottles, drunk breath, cool against the air.